Hello and welcome to this short but informative MGO video about why people use DS4 Windows over the RPCS3 handler just by itself. Now, this is concrete proof. This isn't just me saying, oh, I think it's better now. This is actually a concrete proof reason why people are doing this. And it's quite interesting to know and I think it will change people's perspective on the topic. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing I need to explain is that I'm emulating the DualShock 4 controller. There's no particular reason you can emulate the Xbox or the DualShock 4. But I'm doing the DualShock 4 specifically just because I like having the touchpad also available to me. Um, so another thing I should mention is that this is technically supposed to have 0.5 milliseconds of input delay using this program. However, um, that is very much counteracted by what I'm going to show you. So let's get into it a bit. Um, now I've got this set to actual, but it doesn't matter if I have this set to actual or radial. I'm still only going to be changing this anti dead zone setting, which by default is not 0.2 on DS4 Windows. Now, first thing for first things first, I need to prove to you that DS4 Pad One is my DS4 Windows emulated controller. So to do this. Currently you see it's barely moving. This is how it's moving, sorry, when I move my analog stick. If I set this to one now and hit apply, now you can see it goes right to the top. So you can see it's clearly impacted by my DS4 Windows here, so it must be my DS4 Windows emulate controller. Now let's look at DS4 Pad 2. This is my normal, you know, how my controller works without DS4 Windows basically. Now I'm going to hit um, a save and get to the point of the video now. So now what I want you to do is watch the controller overlay at the top of my screen and the camera of my screen, which isn't hard to do because anyway. So now you can see that my camera or my game is not moving, but my right stick is tilted upwards, right? That's concrete proof right there that first of all, the dead zone of my... Um, on my emulator here, that's set to zero. Doesn't mean that I've got a zero dead zone in the game. Because you can see, as you can see again, my analog's moved, but nothing's happening. If I move it more, then something eventually happens, right? So, okay, so the game must have its built-in dead zone. I've known that for some time now. Now let's get into something else. Let's look at DS4 Windows again. And I'm going to... Um, Go to DS4 Windows and change the setting here. I'm going to change this now to 0.25. Instead of 0.2, just because it shows it a bit better than 0.2 does for me currently. I'm going to hit Apply. I'm going to hit Save here. Okay, so now I want you to watch my control overlay again. You see that? Barely moving my right stick, but I get feedback. So, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that I'm getting feedback from my analog stick from slighter movements. So my dead zone's lower. So, and that also explains what anti-dead zone does, right? So if the game's got a dead zone, it, tr it attempts to make it so that the dead zone's lower. Or it tries to counteract the game's dead zone. I think that's clear proof why people prefer DS4 Windows. So by default, this anti-dead zone setting's not 0.2, right? So it's doing something there that the normal handler of RPCS3 doesn't do. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I think that is extremely clear now. You know, you, you can get a better dead zone, albeit it might be a fake dead zone, but it's a better one because you get feedback from your stick. Um, so yeah, see you guys next time and um, I'll continue making videos like this further, find something like this again. Bye.